Well, from Hamas's perspective, it says that it is now willing to further look at this proposal. But let's be clear, this is the same proposal that Hamas has had now for more uh, than a week and a half. The proposal that was outlined by US President Joe Biden uh, in late May in what was an unexpected address. This was a proposal that he said was drafted and backed by Israel. Israel. But since then, we have seen a lot of commentary across Israel, including from the Prime Minister, downplaying the likelihood of this ceasefire and hostage release deal, and even minimising the uh, possibility that this ceasefire would go ahead because uh, Israel has said that it still hasn't maintained or it still hasn't achieved its major goals of this war. And the key sticking points, which are still major obstacles today, continue to be around those issues of a complete Israeli withdrawal of troops from within Gaza and also a permanent end to the war. And although it seems that this draft that has been put on the table and been accepted in this resolution at the UN Security Council uh, addresses those issues the real struggle to getting a deal across the line will be in the detail. There's still so much that is unknown at this stage and those key issues that I just outlined before will continue to be key sticking points from Israel's perspective. For example, it says that if it withdraws from Gaza, who would be left in power? It says it won't leave Hamas in power. Understanding, of course, that Hamas has a militant wing, but also before this war was the government inside Gaza. It ran municipal services. It ran cleaning the streets and fixing the roads and maintaining water supplies. So uh, Israel is questioning if if there is a complete withdrawal of Israeli troops, who would be left controlling Gaza. It's a legitimate question, a question that doesn't have answers for at the moment. But it also, Bev, gives you an idea as to why, uh, when I talk about the the detail and why that is going to be so important, it really just puts it into a different perspective. There's so much that still needs to be figured out here at a very baseline level. And so while there is this pressure, and I guess Hamas saying that it's willing to engage and uh, the US saying that Israel has already backed this plan, the reality of achieving an actual ceasefire and a hostage release deal could still be a very, very long way off. Yeah. And Alison, it feels with Anthony Blinken again in the region Um, in the U.S. pushing this through the U.N. Security Council, that it's the U.S. really trying to, I don't, wedge might be the wrong word, but really put these two parties on notice that this has to be resolved, that the civilian toll is now untenable. Well, I definitely think the US in the last few weeks has almost been trying to strong arm Israel into publicly agreeing to this plan, which they apparently have agreed to in private, but didn't want to necessarily back in public. Uh, What we're seeing by Antony Blinken on his eighth visit here since the war started is this continuation of a push for peace and a push for a ceasefire deal. He is putting the blame of the obstacle towards a ceasefire deal at the feet of Hamas, saying Hamas is the only party that has not agreed to a deal and has not agreed to this deal. That's not technically correct. It is also elements within the Israeli government that have said that um, they do not agree to going ahead with parts of this deal, like a complete withdrawal of Israeli troops and a complete end to the war at this stage. So uh, there's a lot of pressure on both sides. And it's not surprising that the United States is ramping up its efforts here. This is having a huge impact on Joe Biden and his re-election chances going into um, this election in America later this year. And as the death toll continues to rise in Gaza, there is growing discontent, not only about um, the US support for Israel, but also the US involvement in this war, the provision of 
weaponry that continues to be used inside of Gaza and from what we've been seen, what we've been seen from uh, US diplomats, uh, the White House administration is certainly feeling that pressure and is trying to exert some of it back on Israel uh, and Hamas to try and end this war. Yeah. Uh, I see today the UN has said that potentially the killing of civilians uh, the, the numbers that were killed as a consequence of, a consequence of the ho four hostages being um, uh, released could be considered war crimes. Um, I suppose at this point there's not going to be any investigation, but again, it just it brings this pressure that the UN is trying to point out as to the civilian casualties here. Mm, definitely more added pressure, not only on Israel, but also on Palestinian militant groups with inside Gaza, the United Nations, as you just said, questioning whether or not war crimes have been committed by both sides uh, in what has taken place over the weekend. The Israeli rescue of four hostages that had been taken from the, new, the Nova Music Festival on October 7 and held for some 246 days in captivity. And during that rescue mission, a large number of airstrikes and ground fire that Israel used as the cover in which uh, the Gazan Health Authority says 274 Palestinians were killed, including large numbers of civilians. That's a number that's been disputed by Israel, which also says that militants would be included in that death toll. The United Nations looking at three key issues. One, proportionality, two, distinction, and three, precaution. So, so I'll, I'll break that down a little bit. Proportionality was the level of a force that was used in the rescuing of these hostages, hostages proportional to the number of Palestinians that were killed. Distinction was enough distinction made between combatants and civilians, and also from... Um, uh, from the side of uh, Hamas, uh, were they providing any distinction by placing these hostages within an area that was densely crowded, densely populated in a residential area? And also precaution. What precautions were made were all precautions that could have been put in place made to protect civilian casualties, both lay laying those allegations at Hamas and Israel. Yeah. Alison, appreciate as always your time. Thank you so much.